Hello everyone and welcome to another live from the workshop. So today I'm going to be making the uh, Davros's version of the 12th Doctor's sonic screwdriver. So obviously here we have a sonic screwdriver. This is the 12th Doctor's version because it has the uh, little piece under there, but obviously I'm not going to use that for anything. Um, now, what I've already done for this, as you can see, is destroyed it basically. Um, I have, it still opens and closes, but obviously not all of the pieces open and close, and I have cut off, I've cut off two of these, because just cutting off one of them didn't look quite right to me, so I thought cutting off two was better, and I've also filled in the claws with milliput just to give them a bit more of a solid look. Obviously this one stays open because this bit has been forked out. Um, I had a look at pictures on concept and also pictures in the episode to get an idea of uh, how it might look, and I've also given it uh, some little additions of my own. Um, now, the other thing I've done, obviously, apart from destroying it completely, is I have... Um, now, uh, what I have done is I've literally just got a mini craft saw and then holding it and literally just quickly and sharply just tried to catch the edges of the, of the uh, teeth of the saw with it, just to scratch it up a bit. Obviously, uh, if you are a younger viewer, uh, be very careful when you're using things like hacksaws and mini hacksaws, or if you're a younger viewer, don't use hacksaws at all, I should say. Get your parents to help you do it, um, but obviously you do need to be very careful with doing things like this. Um, now, apart from that, I have made some small cutouts in places, which I'm going to uh, weather up. Uh, so now the basic uh, first step is just going to be doing some weathering, and uh, luckily that is pretty much all of the uh, painting that really needs to be done on this, so let's get to it. And so here is my finished Davros Sonic Screwdriver. So obviously it does still open, but I decided to leave it closed because obviously there's little bits around here and around the top there that aren't painted. And obviously it does, I think it looks better closed actually. I much prefer the uh, closed look around the top of the crystal. If I can just wait one second, there we are. Um, you can see that I've given it the kind of leaking down look. I decided to do that across all of them. Um, just because it means, you know, it doesn't matter which way you display it, then you've kind of got that. But I like to display it when you're viewing it from the top. Yeah, when my camera tracks in. <laughs> I like to display it that way because you've just got, you've got this bit here, you know, hanging out. You've got this bit and then you've got a nice bit of green. Obviously, you've got this chunk here. And then I've also added in this little bit of green here. I don't know how well this comes up on camera. But uh, in, the, um, in the light, that bit of green does stand out. And obviously, that is just part of the normal uh, green tube underneath but I've just added a little bit of green paint in there to make it look a little bit more uh, grimy um, but yeah I'm really pleased with how this came out and it's it's a great it's a great piece for people to make um, especially if your one touch stops working because the great thing about this is you don't need it to work and I know the one touch does have problems at time I know some people have got them straight out of the box and they've not worked properly. Um, I definitely prefer the one touch floors because I like the kind of more bronze colour it's got to um, it's got to the uh, to the design and it hasn't got that really what I found annoying cap um, that you used to get in the uh, 11th uh, Doctor's one. But yeah I think I think this this really um, this really suits uh, this particular Sonic if you've got one spare because it's it's a really fun custom to make as well because um, 
Now, I don't know, I don't know if this is still working or not, because in, in part of making this, it's worth saying as well, actually, while I'm talking about it working, if it does still work, then uh, the paint that I've used on the crystal, um, in theory, the light should still shine through it. But as I said, I'm not sure if the light on this works, because uh, in making this, what I did uh, to rough it up, as well as using the hacksaw, um, I wrapped it in a couple of plastic bags and then chucked it 10 foot in the air and just let it land down on a load of cobbles and then I also bashed it with a hammer um, just to give it a bit of a dented, knocked look. So again, that could have had a catastrophic effect on the electronics, but as I was never planning to make it working, that doesn't bother me. Um, but that's what's fun about this to make. And again, I want to stress that if you are a younger viewer wanting to make this, it is something that you should get your uh, parents' permission for, because obviously I have had to use sharp tools um, and obviously heavy objects such as hammers and things to make it. But the thing that I really loved about making this, and I think, I think I don't know, maybe this is a guy thing, <laughs> but there's something very fun about smashing things up. And um, it, was, it was a lot of fun mucking about with this because, you know, I, I wrapped it up, I bashed it with a hammer, and it was like, right, probably doesn't work anymore. And I was like, right, bash it with a hammer, hit it as hard as I can. And I was like, still, still doesn't look quite, quite damaged enough. So that's when I took the hacksaw to it. But obviously you have to be careful. It's worth saying that it's fine and fun smashing things up, but you do have to be careful when you're doing things like this, because although this does slightly add to the custom, one thing that I didn't want to do, obviously um, I'd cut this one here away um, and obviously I'd cut this piece out, but in hitting it with the hammer, I did break that piece. And now, now that I didn't want to do. Now I've left, obviously I've left it there because there's nothing I can do. And I didn't want to, I decided not to uh, try and mold that back together because I quite like the look of there being a crack there. Again, it adds, it does add to the custom, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's all fine and good, you know, destroying these things and having fun making them. But even when you're trying to destroy something, you've still got to be very careful when you're doing it. And I, I think this goes back to a uh, an age-old thing that I raised on one of my, I think it was the destroyed new series Dalek I made. In that, a lot of people want to, a lot of people I see on eBay, they and places they make destroyed Daleks for sale, and they've just set fire to them and. They they just they just look like they've been set fire to. They don't look they don't look like they've had really anything put into them. And and it's a shame because if they hadn't set those dogs on fire, they could have been greatly used for other things. But this is this is an example here is thinking, right, I want to destroy a sonic screwdriver. Don't just don't just destroy it because you'll ruin it. What I've had to do here is yes, I've had to destroy it, I've had to take chunks and things out of it, but the majority, the majority of what's been done here is paint application and is is weathering. You know, yes, bits are hanging off. Yes, there are chunks taken out of it, but that's a very small amount of it. If you set fire to, the point is, the, rather like the Daleks, this is meant to be made of metal and things in places. And for example, if you scorched this piece that's meant to be made of metal with a lighter or, or some fire, and then it bubbles up and it, it just looks like plastic, and you can tell it looks like plastic. But if you if you knock it, damage it, scrape it, make nicks in it, like you would get in metal, and then you give it a kind of dirty, burnished metal finish, then it looks far more superior to to just just destroying it and and you know scorching it and things like that. It's it's it is a lesson that I think is is well worth remembering if you're making. If you're trying to make destroyed customs, don't just destroy it to make the custom. Really put some work into it because the results will be far better than they would be if you just, you know, bashed something up or set fire to it. You, you, if you want to have a, a good result, make something. If you want to destroy something, this is uh, this is almost a lovely bit of symmetry, a lovely bit of poetry. If you want to, if you want to make something look destroyed put work into making it. If you want to destroy something, make it. I I, I, I quite like that. I might put that on a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> but it, but it's, 
it's it's a great rule for for customs uh, and it's a great rule to stand by if you if you really want to make something look good even if it's something that's been destroyed a destroyed dalek if you really want to make a good destroyed dalek you've got to put work into making it if you want to destroy something you've got to make it and i think that is definitely i really have to get that on a t-shirt now copyright jimmy wolf 2017. I'm saying that now because I, I might put that on t-shirts. I wonder if anyone would be interested in buying them. Anyway, um, I'm rambling now. But anyway, that is my uh, finished Davros Sonic Screwdriver. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, favorite, subscribe, share. It really helps me out a lot. And be sure to check out the description below for a link to my Patreon. There is an exclusive webcomic and rewards for people who support it. And the funding generated by my Patreon helps me fund future videos. I salute you all, and I will see you with another video very soon.